Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where I cover nostalgic, obscure, or otherwise strange content. I always sit here. <laughs> if you're new to my channel and you're wondering why I'm on the floor all of a sudden, you'd be wondering like me because I'm all already regretting this. I'm like, why, why am I doing this? Why am I here? My back hurts, I have no back support. <laughs> no, but real talk, I used to film right here all of the time my first like 20 something videos before I got the recording room set up, which is right over there, by the way, I can see it. I can see my comfortable chair from where I'm sitting. But I wanted to film from right here because it is actually my 200th video right now. This is video 200. And if you told me the first time I sat down right here to make a video, I never would have believed you when you said that I got to 200. Quite frankly, I'm shocked no one's taken away my internet access yet. Someone needs to stop this. But for old time's sake, let's do a video from right here on the floor where it all began to celebrate 200. And also to celebrate 200, let's talk about something that was so nostalgic for me as a kid. Well, it's nostalgic now. Back then, it was just, just like a, a Tuesday night was watching this movie. And I know it's nostalgic for a lot of people, and that movie, of course, is Camp Rock. And I know a lot of people have already talked about Camp Rock and made really, really good videos about it, but this is something that I've wanted to talk about for basically as long as I've had a channel because it was something that was so, so important to me when I was like 11. 12. I remember I had Camp Rock jeans that I was gonna try to wear for a bit, but then I remembered that I, I'm pretty sure I gave them away. <laughs> but I loved this movie. I loved this movie so much, and I've kind of wanted to be talking about this movie all summer and just didn't get around to it because, you know, there were so many other things that I wanted to cover and I'm really glad I did, but now, you know, summer's coming to a close. I'm actually filming this on August 31st, so tomorrow I officially count it as spooky season, even though we all know it's spooky season all year round here. But let's send summer off with a bang by talking about Camp Rock, a movie that was absolutely ridiculous, but we all watched the hell out of it. If you don't know, this is that movie that basically began Demi Lovato's career, began her relationship with the Disney Channel, I'm pretty sure. And this was also made at the height of the Jonas Brothers popularity, so it's that movie with Joe Jonas in it as like the main love interest, and then the other two are there for a couple of scenes. Nick Jonas and Kevin Jonas are barely in this movie. It's mostly just Joe. All right, in all seriousness, I'm just gonna sit here and watch this movie because it's been so long. <laughs> Oh my god, balancing the computer on the knee? This was a terrible setup. I now remember why I busted my ass to have an entire room to get this stuff done. So we start off with Michi Torres. I remember her last name for some reason. I'm not sure why. The whole thing is coming back to me as we speak. She is waking up on the last day of school. I love how she just like half awake pushes a CD into her computer. It pulls up not like a recorded song, but like some version of Garage Band from Hell. What is this? There's no tracks on that track. Am I am I wrong? We're two we're literally nine seconds in. I'm already questioning everything that I know about everything. <laughs> I just realized that I have the exact same hair as Mitchy right now, and I think that comes from something deep in my subconscious that just wanted to be Mitchy as a kid. She's putting so much effort into getting ready for the last day of school, which could be something that everybody else did. I didn't go to public school. I didn't, I was homeschooled. I wore my pajamas to school. But like, isn't this the kind of thought process you put in on the first day? On the last day, aren't you just like, whatever, it's the last day? Also, I've had beef with Mitchie's notebook since the very, very beginning. The first time I saw this movie. Why doesn't she have just like a spiral bound notebook? I always wondered this. It looks like she like stapled those pages together. What does she do when she writes another song? Does she staple another page in? I have questions. <laughs> so after this beginning montage, she sits down to breakfast with her mom where they're watching like pop culture news and they find out that Shane Gray, who is like this universe's, I don't insert douchey pop star. I don't know. When he stormed off the set of the new Connect 3 video. He stormed off the set of his music video and this has caused like worldwide controversy. Like everyone is stopping and talking about it. Which yeah, sounds like an asshole thing to do. 
but like it doesn't sound like something that would make headlines. <laughs> Maybe it was simpler times in 2008, but like headlines? The Connect 3 summer tour has been canceled. They canceled their summer tour because of this. Why? <laughs> He's got everything except a clue. Lots of pop stars go through a silly, goofy mood and do something stupid. They're people. And a lot worse has happened. You know how many douchey things Justin Timberlake has got caught doing? He hasn't canceled a summer tour and we're begging him to cancel his next tour. Look what I found in the crisper. A Camp Rock brochure. So Mitchie really wants to go to Camp Rock, this super cool but really expensive music camp. But we just can't swing it right now. And they just don't really have the money for it that year. But by the way, it's the last day of school, right? Am I being nitpicky? Isn't this something that you talk about like weeks in advance? Like when I would go to camp, I would know by like March that I was gonna go to camp in June. It's something that you like plan for. Camp Rock is a no-go. She has a conversation about it with her best friend who we literally never see again. After school and apparently work, she comes home to parents that are very gleeful. How was work? So we serve burgers with a Barney smile. So what's for dinner? Burgers. Poor kid is surrounded by burgers. You're going to Camp Rock! And apparently in the past, I don't know, maybe 10 hours max, the mom has made a huge business deal. Well, actually, we're going. That was not even on the table as of this morning because all of a sudden, her catering business is going to cater for the entire summer for the entire camp. This is a steady job and you get to go to camp at a discounted rate! And they just like hired her, I guess just with a phone call? Or maybe, I guess she made a phone call? I'm, time seems to bend around the Torres family. But you have to help out in the kitchen. Thank you! But she's going to Camp Rock. It would be kind of a boring Camp Rock movie if she didn't go. If it just started with, this, is, this kid really wants to go to Camp Rock. Too bad for that kid. This ki other kid gets to go. That would, that would be messed up. So now we're at camp. Everybody is unloading. Everybody's excited. My brother, who's a drummer, would like to point out that the most realistic thing about this movie is this kid that's drumming on everything because drummers absolutely do that. <laughs> This is the mean girl who's riding up in a limo. I guess the only person that can do that and get away with it while still being charming is Annie James from Parent Trap. Also, I love how the <laughs> how strong of a breeze is blowing her hair right here because you just know that there's like somebody back there just like with a big like fan or something just like directly on her and she just has to smile through it. Brand Cesaria. This is camp director. Camp director slash founding member. This character is really not important that much at all, but I always liked him. And bass guitar of the Wet Crows, and you must be. Also, I always thought that his uh, band name was the Wet Crows. I'm pretty sure he said White Crows, but you know, 11 year old me couldn't understand his accent. Bass guitar of the Wet Crows. Bass guitar of the Wet Crows. Wet Crows would be a great name for a band though. And this is my daughter. Uh. Conveniently, Mitchie leaves before he gets to see what she looks like, which you will find out why they wrote that in in a minute. Learn that from the mixer, Jagger. As the time when I toured with Aerosmith. Whoa, not Aerosmith. My mom loves Aerosmith, oh my God. Sorry, I didn't see you, obviously. Mitchie pisses off the mean girl by existing and then makes a friend with this girl. Understandable, because her mom's TJ Tyler. Very conveniently explains that the mean girl's mom is like a mega superstar. Hi, I'm Caitlin. She gives us this beautiful meme that has stood the test of time. Check me out. Cool. <laughs> I don't consider myself much of a musician, especially when it comes to electronic beats, but I feel like that's not even remotely how that works. Hi, gang. I'm Dee LaDuke. Hi, Dee. Hi. Hi. Here at Camp Rock, we sing. <laughs> Camp directors always have way too much energy, don't they? A little pitchy in places, but we'll fix that by the final jam. I love how she's pitting them against each other and they're only, you know, two seconds into this summer. This summer is not just about the final jam. We have a lot of work to do. It's not just about the final jam where you all compete head to head for crown of, I don't actually know what they win at this, at this camp, but you know, it's not just about the competition. It's about like other stuff too. You could go canoeing. Holla. <laughs> oh, don't ever do that a very special celebrity instructor. So the celebrity instructor, if you couldn't guess, is Shane, the diva. <laughs> I'm Shane Gray for crying out loud. Oh, bless the Jonas Brothers. They didn't have any acting experience at this point. This is where Connect Three 
connected. I'm just now realizing that I don't think they were supposed to be brothers in this version of their band, which is called Connect 3, which is not a great name for a band. But that's so funny. If the story is that they met at camp, they look exactly alike. Did they also have a parent trap situation where they met their long lost sibling at camp? I want to see a movie about that. It's just the parrot trap, but it's the three Jonas brothers just finding out <laughs> that they're all siblings. And they make it now once they're all in their 30s. Oh, and can you make me a birdhouse or something? I don't know why Kevin always got, like, whether it be in this or even on the show that they had Jonas. You remember Jonas Brothers having a show? No, I guess I have to make a video about that at some point. Hey, I'm Nick. Hey, I'm Joe. And I'm... But, like, they always typecast him as, like, the dumbest character. I don't really have a problem with that. We have a problem with that. Like, lovable for sure. He was the himbo to end all himbos, but, like, it's gotta sting a little bit, right? One time, a friend of mine wrote a script and gave it to me and said, Hey, there's this character. She's really, like ditzy, just kind of an airhead and all this stuff. And I wrote it specifically for you, Avery. And I was like, oh, <laughs> fuck off. This camp thing is supposed to fix it. It's good PR. So to fix his PR, he has to go be a camp counselor. I don't really, I don't get it, but that's the, that's the story. Hey, what's up, Uncle Brown? And his Uncle Brown is the uh, camp director from before, the one that knows Mick Jagger. Learned that from the mixta. Jagger. Mitchie's helping her mom make burgers, and I think it's supposed to be like super gross and like, ew, she has to make burgers, but like it's a completely normal thing. It's just hamburger meat. Are you gonna sing in front of all those people? No way. She's really scared to sing in front of anybody, which is weird because she's at the music camp. Not exactly who you think you are. She sees the mean girls practicing. Well, this mean girl and these other two mean girls that we haven't met yet practicing. Work with me here, people! Hello, we're trying! And yelling at each other. You think you are? I love that it's like auto-tuned to hell, but I'm supposed to believe that they're just singing, just like acoustic, naturally. Then Michi goes to sit down at a piano, right as Shane is being chased by a bunch of crazy fans. <laughs> I don't know why I remember this, but I happen to remember that that clip of him falling was not meant to happen. And you can tell that it wasn't meant to happen, but they just like kept it in because they were like, <laughs> it's kind of funny. It happens all the time in movies because there's just something about somebody falling that like makes the shot more interesting, but I always feel bad for people. Where'd he go? He somehow gets away by hiding behind this tiniest, scrawniest bush I've ever seen. Do you know what it's like? And then he hears Mitchie singing. He's like, oh my god, this girl sings like an angel. He basically pulls a Prince Eric from Ariel, who we need to put some more respect on that man's name, by the way. He almost died for his dog. But he basically pulls the same thing where he's like, that voice, I gotta marry this girl. Hello? But by the time he is able to get up from his hiding spot and go check, she's gone. Who's in here? Women don't want men to know that they can sing. They'll assume we're all sirens and tell the church. Gotta find something to wear. She's dressed exactly like everybody else. They're all dressed the way that kids on Disney Channel dressed in this era. I'm not saying I wasn't guilty of perpetuating 2000s fashion, but you know. This is really cool. That microphone is not plugged into anything though. I remember this movie and uh, High School Musical always got pitted against each other as like, which one is the best true Disney Channel musical movie? And it was like a rivalry. The answer, of course, in that debate is Lemonade Mouth. Lemonade Mouth was the best Disney Channel original movie with music in it. But I digress. Don't think that being mean will get you anywhere. This is day one. Where did they practice? Like, this choreography is dependent on the chairs and the tables and everything. Wow, she's amazing. Yeah, she should be. Her mom's on Broadway. Yeah, you know how Broadway talent is hereditary. That's why Tess over there runs this camp. All the characters are acting like they live there, but everybody's gotten there at the same exact time. I know that, like, she means in summer's past, but you're telling me that the social hierarchy didn't change at all in a year? Is your dad Nikki Torres the composer? No. And a hardware store. They're like, ew, your parents are working class, and then they go to leave. And then Mitchie's like, oh, okay, I have to lie. But my mom, uh, the president of Hot Tunes TV in China. 
this lie would never fly. Last summer I was in like three music videos. 2008 and they're at camp that probably has no service. Well Shane had service but he's a big famous boy. You're supposed to name some names. If you say I've been in a bunch of music videos, the natural follow-up question is really? Whose music videos were you in? They didn't have any follow-ups? Although if you're working with people in the industry, they might just be completely unimpressed and not care because that's just what they do all the time. So I've gotten to work on some pretty big projects as a stand-in in my time, like Disney, Marvel, Stranger Things, but it's like one of those things where if I said that to anybody that I worked with in the industry, nobody really cares. It's not that big of a deal because I was just a stand-in. Now if if my friends find out that my grandparents designed the home that blew up at the end of Bad Boys 2, they'll go crazy, but like, my resume is not gonna impress them. Also, I just noticed this person has a tattoo back here that they didn't cover up, I guess, because they just didn't think it was seen. Not one of the cookbooks has a recipe for chili for 300. Don't you have a recipe? I'm sure other people have pointed this out, I can't remember, but like, she's the professional caterer, don't, like, caterers have their own recipes? Which color? They're exactly the same. So you see my dilemma. This was the Pam meme before the Pam meme. Which one? They're both the same. Actually, that probably aired around the same time as this. I can't remember. Shane Gray is, yeah, yeah, you can totally call me back. The mean girl is mean because her mom works too much. You know how that is. You know how having an emotionally absent parent means that you get to just take out all your frustrations on other people. Every time she wins a Grammy, she adds a charm. Totally blingalicious. Blingalicious, wow. You write songs? Yeah, but they're they're probably not that good. So they want to hear one of her songs. She's shy. We're friends now, right? And they won't take no for an answer, so they steal her ridiculously stupid looking songbook out of her hands, which also, by the way, only has the lyrics written down on it. Like, where's the sheet music? Gonna let the light shine up. She clearly wrote sheet music. You're dreaming. You're a rock princess. That can't be something that works outside of movies, right? Okay, I rock. Trying to gaslight somebody into thinking that they're dreaming? I don't think that's ever worked. Not that it should. You better go, the queen awaits. So she's ditching her friends uh, for the mean girls, but they only met like yesterday, so they're kind of way more mad about it than they should be, but you know, I don't know. What? Rise and shine, superstar. Meanwhile, Shane's uncle is dealing with his diva ass. Ooh. Don't say I didn't want you. Such a badass. And you might want to put that mattress out in the sun. It's really operating off that do no harm but take no shit energy. Can you put some water in that vase? Flowers look parched. Gotta respect it. If the class is a rockin', I'm a glad I came knocking. That is a play on a joke that is not DCOM approved, so I wonder why it's in there. Who will I be? It's up to me. It makes Mitchy sing in front of the whole class. I know you're singing a solo, but it's so low, I can't hear you. Relatable though. I don't see enough representation of the it's so nervous to sing that you can barely sing in an audible tone. Who will I be? It's up to me. I always say that um, when I sing, it's like that uh, frog that I always forget the name of in Looney Tunes, where like he won't sing at all in front of anybody else. But once everybody leaves, he's like, hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my ragtime gal. Demi truly was like the best singer of her entire generation of Disney. Let me have it out, bye. <laughs> Mean Girl's all, like, threatened by her, so she wants to make her a backup singer. Your vocals in the background would be, like, amazing. Ouch. Yeah, your vocals would be, like, so good, like, in the background. Hello? So Shane Gray comes in, and Mitchie doesn't want him to see her. I guess they haven't met yet. I guess it's just because she doesn't want anybody to know that she's the cook's daughter, but like there's other people around different times when she's cooking. So like you think everybody would know, but she's so upset at the idea of Shane Gray knowing this fact about her that she does white face. <laughs> I don't know what else to call this. I'm sorry. I'm Shane. But I'm sure even the kitchen help knows that. So comically narcissistic. That's what they should name their band. It's better than Connect 3 anyway. Also, this is not a good disguise. And you are? A person. She puts big fancy rock star in his place though. Thank you. Much better. <laughs> in my world, it is. <laughs> oh no. We're in my world. Protect this man. <laughs> and five, six, seven, eight. He dances like a dad, but he's got the one-liners to just kill. Is that flower in your hair? No, it's Chinese body powder. 
are rich people not supposed to know what flour is now? Grab a mic and a hat. Follow me if you can. Then Shane comes in and teaches them just the coolest choreography I've ever seen. I refuse to believe that was actually choreography. I have to believe that what he just did was just completely made up on the spot. Everybody knows this choreography pretty well. It doesn't really look like they need this class. Talk about dancing to the beat of a different drum. Oh my god, you tripped? How could you? You're a drummer, dude. The rhythm is in your hands. Shane decides to be nice for once, so that's cool. Oh no. Hi, girls. Her mom comes to say hi. She's cooked for everybody. From Jessica and Nick pre-breakup to Pharrell. What? Why couldn't that just be the lie, Mitchie? <laughs> couldn't you just say that she's your mom and she's a world famous cook? Why did, why, what? <laughs> I'm shocked the camp even got her. Why did you just think of this lie now? Uh, let's see, Shane is a moody guitar boy. Mitchie's mom is worried about her because her friends are jerks. And now it's time for a jam something. Oh my God, you remember when we used to think dresses with like pants underneath them was cool? I love how comfortable this character is with just throwing all of her friends in the back. Anytime that I've written something that I've also acted in, I've like self-consciously gone through and made sure that I like wasn't the one with the most lines because I would just feel too guilty <laughs> being like, hey, come work on my thing. It's actually all about me though. I love how Shane's totally into it. <laughs> like usually they let the love interest be like totally not into the anything that the mean girl does. But he's just like, nah, someone with a big ego and bubblegum pop. I'm not alone out here in the sticks. Did you enjoy seeing you back up? I love how she just rubs it in. Like, yeah, you made the wrong choice, right? Loser. <laughs> Can a guy get some peace? <laughs> she just like breathes, dude. Sorry. You said that already. Sorry, I... <laughs> The last time they interacted, she had no problem telling him to go fuck himself. Why is all of a sudden she's like, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you're right, I shouldn't have breathed in Shane Gray's presence. I liked it. Also, they can't tell if Mitchie is supposed to be impressed by this guy or not, because when they were, you know, watching him on the news, she was like, ugh, what a loser. He's got everything except a clue. Now I guess when she sees him up close, she's like, ooh, his skin really is that smooth in real life. I only play the music that the label thinks will sell. But you were just rocking out to the bubblegum pop. I don't think that's true, Shane. I think you like the bubblegum pop. That's okay. <laughs> I like that it's spaghetti with no sauce on it, which nobody eats because they wanted to make sure that none of the clothes got stained with sauce. When I have to be uncool. How I feel when I have to put somebody on shadow ban for spamming my chat on live. You're on kitchen duty. What? He puts her on kitchen duty because Mitchie doesn't stand up for her. Happy cooking. Thanks a lot. It's a good job, Mitchie. Somebody's gonna figure out your little Hannah Montana deal. Oh. <laughs> you hungry? That box has nothing in it, but it's okay. Do you have a second? He sits her down on the lake and sings her a song that he's been writing, which is to the tune of uh, her song from before, but she doesn't notice somehow. I need to try to get to where you are. You can't sit a girl, he doesn't know that this is the girl in front of him, right? You can't sit a girl down and sing to her by a lake if you're just test running a song for what you think is another girl. Not cool, Shane. You're the voice I hear inside my head. Oh my god, he's got ghost backup vocals. Oh, next to you. And then where am I, Shane? You next to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> I need to find you. I like to think that Shane wrote this hoping that it would be like a homing signal for Mitchie, that he doesn't know is Mitchie, like, you know, in Mac and Me when all the aliens just kind of look up to the sky and go, ha! <laughs> then they like know where each other are. I think that's what he was trying to do. Why are you looking at me like that? I don't know. Shane, you can't have a crush on her if you also have a crush on her when you think she's another. It's very confusing. To get some dip for these chips. The chips that don't exist, because that is an empty box. Hey, mom. How you doing? A boy smiled at her, mom. She's really happy today. And our six hands. Six? Yeah, my daughter. You cannot tell me this would have lasted this long into summer. Hey, you must be hands five and six. So in a very uh, spectacularly dramatic cartoonish even fall. Mitchie ends up on the floor covered in wet chips and now her 
ex-friend who now hates her finds out that she's been lying to everybody. You're hiding behind some crazy lie. You hide too. They have a fight. What happened to you? She got drowned in her lies. Ooh, she was working on that one the entire time she was yelling at her. She just was like, she had it just like in the back pocket. Outfit check. White shorts and green hoodies. On Wednesdays they wear green. The backup singer should wear the same thing. Not the lead singer, hello. But the backup singers don't even match the, oh God. Caitlyn Geller! Here's another meme that will live on in infamy. <laughs> yeah, she's really good. <laughs> she likes her too. Sounds like she should join Bit Brigade. You know who Bit Brigade is? They they play music to old games from the NES. Like they play like rocked out versions of the background music, but they also have a guy who plays this the the game as they go and if he fucks it up, then they have to start over. I love Bit Brigade. I'm spilling everywhere. Oh god. <laughs> It's just the power cord to the sound system test. Smooth. Hi, bad. I like that Shane dips just because of this one girl pissing him off. Uh, what? <laughs> she said, whatever, major loser. There's no way you pull one of these and you're like thinking that you're the cool one. I couldn't even do it, but you know what I mean. I mean. I'm too cool. I can't, I can't do it. That is so last year. So now, just like that, Mitchie and Caitlyn are friends again. Does this look like a record, girls? Huh? Oh yeah, that joke aged well. Kids not knowing what record players are. I like a record player that was made in 2014. I want it to look authentic next to my eighth note cupcakes. Those eighth note cupcakes don't have any, like it's just a muffin with a little bit of frosting on it. That's a, that's a bummer. There should be frosting and then, then the note frosting. This is freaking me out. Why are we talking? I guess they're not friends just like that. <laughs> Do I need to talk about the fact that they're blowing up balloons with their lungs, but the ones back here that I'm supposed to believe they just did are obviously full of helium because they're blo- Okay, no, sorry, never mind. I was friends with Tess. Hard to believe. More <laughs> like impossible. They fight like they're in one direction together. I'm- I'd be shocked if they didn't know each other beforehand. Hey. Where'd that other balloon come from? Hand clapping, hand shaking. Shane's all excited practicing to sing with the boys, which is kind of cute. It's not my fault you didn't ask me to make you anything. I didn't want anything. Well, I wanted a birdhouse. And then he gets a call from the boys. Guys. Sorry. I think this was supposed to make them look like super cool rock stars, but they just kind of look like they're in a suburban neighborhood because they surely are. Like Shane's supposed to be the one roughing it, but like where he is is like beautiful land and all this stuff. And I mean, this this looks great, but it's just kind of like, meh. Kind of reminds me of Over the Hedge, you know? And remember, whoever wins, no go backs. Oh no, were they making the Jonas Brothers wear the purity rings in the mo Oh no. Those poor boys. Now I just find that girl with a voice. So I guess he starts a rumor, but this rumor gets around between all these kids who get more and more elaborately funny <laughs> musical instruments one at a time until everybody knows that Shane's looking for this girl with a voice. What you venting for? Here we go, so much flow. Show me the dreams you have become real. Oh, wow. You can't be annoyed after you started the rumor. This was the whole point. It's not me. <laughs> Trust. Anyway, he's never heard me sing. If you had like, given some more information, Mitchie would have known that it was probably her. Being a jerk is a part of the rock star image. Keeping up an image can be tiring. Hang on, he, so I'm supposed to believe that he's just a jerk just to like keep the posers away? He was a jerk to his uncle. Does he think his uncle is a poser? He knew Mick Jagger. Learn that from the mixta. Bye. I love you, mom. Love you too, bye. Now the mean girl knows her secret, so uh-oh. <laughs> I finally talked my nephew into singing us a song. And so now we see at this like, I don't know, performance, thing Shane gets up there and he's like I got the band back together and then we have the obligatory Jonas Brothers song you couldn't have the Jonas Brothers in a movie without them singing a very Jonas Brothers song this is like more Jonas Brothery than any of the songs that they released remember when they wrote that song Australia it's like I'm gonna meet my dream girl and she'll be from Australia like, which is cool. A lot of cool chicks from Australia, but also, why Australia specifically? 
I always thought it was an in-joke, and then I read an interview where they were just like, no, we just came up with it because we just thought it was really funny. And we love girls with accents. They didn't specify any kind of accent. They just said accents in general. So I guess if you're a woman that can speak, you've got a chance with the Jonas Brothers. Tell us about your mom again. And now everybody finds out that she was lying. Mitchie has dishes to do. Let's go. Fuck off. This is like one of those things where people are like, Ew, you work at like Wendy's and that's supposed to be like a diss. It's like, yeah, Wendy's is great. If nobody worked there, we wouldn't have Wendy's. Like you can't be like, oh, you work an essential job that we all depend on as if that's supposed to like make them feel bad. Fuck off and pay minimum wage workers more money. Joe Biden, you won't. <laughs> Shame. You were lying all summer. Oh, poor boy's broken up. He's like about to cry. I was just trying to- Save it for your interview with Pop Informer Magazine. Did you not think that she could have sold you out to a magazine when she was a rich person? Her cover was that her mom was the president of a tabloid. You wanted to be friends with Shane Gray, not me. He's like, I was more comfortable talking to the daughter of like the TMZ executive. Now that I know she's just a, a cook's daughter, what am I supposed to believe now? <laughs> Tess just creeping up and backing up really quick. It's like that Homer meme. I don't want to get sidetracked with liking someone anyway. Yeah, that's why I'm looking for this girl. You still looking for that girl? Uncle knows what's up. I have her song stuck in my head. This is real. The uncle's like, okay, you don't, you don't have to sing the song. I, I got, I got it. This is real. This is me. But now the mean girl knows that Mitchie's also the mystery girl with the voice. You are so never going to see Final Jam. So she hatches a plan. Mitchie's being bullied. None of it means anything unless people see who you really are. Wow, I wonder who this is for the benefit of. Also, he just said that he acts like a douche just to keep people away from him because he doesn't want people to see who he really is. And your music has to be who you really are. I think he's the one being a little bit pretentious. The only thing that's changed is he knows she's not rich anymore. He's got to show how you feel or it doesn't mean anything. And he's like, I can't believe how inauthentic you're being with me. My sweetie, you are so much more than you can see. She was also the mom in Wizards of Waverly Place. I gotta do Wizards videos. That show was so great. I loved it. Hey guys. She has no fork for her cake. Can I sit with you? You have to give me your cake. Do, do you have a fork? She doesn't have a fork. Could you tell your mom to be just a little more careful? Stop talking to me like that. Yeah. But I'm a much better person than someone who feels good about herself because she makes everyone else feel bad. You're so out of the group. Then we'll make our own group. All right, so now everybody's getting ready for final jam. It's happening. I'm sure they have it. But then, uh-oh, Tess is like, they stole my bracelet. Tess thinks that Mitchie and Caitlin stole her charm bracelet. And the uncle looks around and finds it after about two seconds in a very obvious place. They're very obviously being framed. I've got to ban you guys from the rest of camp activities until the end of Final Jam. So he tells them they can't compete in anything until the end of Final Jam. Camper mates! Holy shit, that's a lot of ketchup and mustard. Why do you have that much ketchup and mustard? There's no way you need that much. I am holding the lineup for Final Jam. The calendar said that Final Jam was tomorrow, so I don't find out until like the day before the morning of. <laughs> that's stressful. Guess who? Dude, you're in the room, I can see you. I can see you too, man! Oh, sweet summer child. It hasn't been the same just hugging Nate. <sighs> yeah, it hasn't been. No thoughts, just hair product. Bless him. Just kept repeating until the end of Final Jam. What? <laughs> but then Mitchie puts it all together. You see, he said until the end of Final Jam, which means they can still perform at Final Jam just at the very end while they're fresh in the judge's mind and they have an advantage. Also, I was always afraid and still afraid now that she's gonna drop that laptop in the water. Who stops? Yeah! So now it's Final Jam. We did it right. No, you didn't. You never do. The mean girl is verbally abusing her friends. Come back here. And then this girl, Peggy, storms off. Your lip gloss is so not glossy anymore. And then so does the other girl. We've invited the other members of Connect 3 to be judges! The whole band is here to be judges. I guess the winner of Final Jam gets to record with Shane. A chance to record with my nephew, pop star Shane Gray! So it's like, I guess he gets a say in who he records with. It's crazy, come rock with me! 
this group comes out and uh, the one former mean girl is already a part of their group and has like a central part of the act even though she was in a different group like 10 minutes ago. She pulled that switch up off fast. Good for her. Also, I don't remember the song at all, but it's a vibe. Now the mean girl goes up and look at that. Her famous superstar mom is in the crowd. She doesn't have security or anything. Can you imagine if Beyonce just came to her kid's recital? It'd be chaos. Mean Girl performs this like Madonna-esque thing with like all these mirrors. It's actually a pretty cool performance. I know that we all hate her, but like it's pretty tight. And then her mom takes a phone call right in the middle of her song and she gets completely messed up. And the song is like obviously about her issues with her mom. So like insult to injury. Salt in the wound. Then she trips and almost falls off stage and then runs three feet backstage and starts crying. Come on. We all know that's a rookie mistake. You run into the bathroom and cry when you're in public. We have a last minute addition. A last minute addition? I thought this was like a, there were, there was like a casting call type of thing. Like he put the names up on the board. That, that means that not everybody who wanted to perform got to perform. Why does this person just get to be a last minute addition? This but it's the other former mean girl who was never actually really mean. You a good girl, quiet. She comes out singing a song and Danny Gonzalez pointed this out in his video, but it is very true. Like we're supposed to have this like emotional moment with her, but we don't really know her because she really didn't get much screen time at all. Even when she was there, they would give the lines to the other, other girl. So maybe if they hadn't like completely just shoved this character in the background, this would be more emotional than it is. Also, she's not playing that guitar. She's not even moving her hand. Also, it's not plugged in. The guitar has a little jack on it, it looks like, so that it could be plugged in, but it's not plugged into anything. <laughs> I'm also gonna have to look this up, but I distinctly remember reading that everybody got to sing their parts in this movie except for this girl. But this girl can actually sing. I know, because I watched the behind the scenes stuff on the DVD. I had this movie on DVD. So like, I wonder why she didn't get to sing. But yeah, anyway, she does great. And she's obviously a great actress. I feel like they just wasted so much potential with this, with this character and this girl. Like they could have made her into a character that I cared about, you know? And when someone's that good, someone should tell them. Mean Girl apologizes. She's had an epiphany now that her mom made her cry on stage. It's officially the end of Final Jam. Yes, yeah, so now that everybody's performed, the judges are going to move from their table in the middle of everybody to the back of the room where they're in the middle of everybody so that they can converse amongst themselves privately. Excuse me. Then Mitchie and Caitlin signal the camp director from backstage. It's the end of Final Jam. I was so hoping you'd catch on. <laughs> you could have just told them that. You had to be like the Riddler. I know you don't want to take a side, dude, but be more utilitarian than that. Jeez. So now Mitchie gets her big moment to sing. This is real. This is me. I don't know why I love this song to this day. It's not a good song, but it just, it's a moment every time. Shane turns around in like slow motion. He's like, that's the girl with the voice. That's the song. So that must be the girl. And his bandmates are like surprised and I don't think they know Mitchie. So I think they're just surprised that Shane didn't make this girl up. She got like a couple good headbangs in there. Good for her. All right, you want to see the, the scene that made 11 year old me believe in love? <laughs> Cause here it is. Nick, his name is like Nate or something in this, but he looks so confused. He's like, what the hell are you doing, dude? This is her moment. <laughs> Don't do that. that she looks so confused to see him when she was looking directly in his direction like two seconds ago. Now it's a duet. I'm sorry, how is there no feedback from their microphones? They're right next to each other. And also while I'm being nitpicky like this, she the continuity of like the microphone's in her right hand, now it's in the left hand, now it's in the right hand. I'm just sorry. It's, you, once you see it, you can't unsee it. Goosebumps, that little handhold they do, it gets me every time. The winner 
a final jam. So the winner is announced, it's Peggy. She was really good, and also a lot of people are like, why didn't Mitchie win? And it's like, okay, fair, but like, you can't win if you have the judge, one of the judges singing with you. You can't win if you're the judge's girlfriend. <laughs> Actually, this whole system of having Shane and his bandmates judge feels like it's primed for corruption anyway. Like, he's been there the whole time, he's gotta have favorites. I thought the point of judges was like, they don't have any contact with the contestants, so that it's like unbiased. Anyway, she won, she was very good. You guys were really great. Thanks. The mean girl is like totally a different person now. She's learned her lesson. She's gone from comically evil to just like super sorry. Maybe her life flashed before her eyes and she had like one of those near death experiences when she almost fell off the stage and it like made her rethink everything. So I guess my search is over. Shane comes down the stairs. He's not mad at her anymore. He's like, now that I know she can sing, I don't care that she's been lying to me. You up for a canoe ride later? I wouldn't miss it. Okay, but can one of you learn how a canoe works, please? It's stressing me out. And now that Final Jam is over, summer is over, everybody stands ominously with their back facing the audience and then they sing the title song of the movie slash camp. And everybody knows it, so I guess they were also practicing this one. I guess it's like one that they do every single year, so that kind of makes sense. It makes more sense than like everybody knowing the dance moves of all the choreography the first day of class. I like that they make the centerpiece Shane and Mitchie. They're like, these people are dating now. Care about them. And that's the end. No, wait a minute. That isn't the end. Disney Plus. Okay, there was an extra scene. Like an after credit scene. I remember this. Like Marvel. Hang on, now I have to look in a less than legal place because Disney Plus won't show me that scene. Caitlin, we know you said you built a little recording studio. Yeah, so they're all back at Caitlin's place and they're gonna record a song together. Just the girls. I don't know why they shoehorned in an extra scene and didn't make it a scene where Shane and Mitchie were like on a date together. You know like Pride and Prejudice where they like gave us that extra scene in the movie that wasn't in the book or any adaptation where like Darcy and Elizabeth are married and they're like happy. They could have at least done that. Like, you know how, you know how Camp Rock and Pride and Prejudice are basically the same movie. Hang on. Is that the, that is the same, that's the same screen from the beginning of the movie where Mitchie put in the, the, the seat. That's the same screen. Also, this is not a soundproof place to be f filming. Also, look at that sound wave going where there's like no singing going. Even if it was picking up the music, it's not making that waveform. It's over the same tomorrow. Also, they're not all singing on different mics, don't you? Because then they're not on different tracks, like you'd have to cut one of them off. They're all singing over each other. That's not how that works, I don't think. And then there's this last scene at the end where it's clear that nobody knows what they're supposed to be doing because Mitchie's still singing, but we can't hear her. And then all the other girls look confused. <laughs> they just let the clip go out for too long and then they kept it, but yeah. That is Camp Rock, the famous Camp Rock. This movie is so silly, but it brings back so much nostalgia. This is the movie that made me want to go to camp. And then I went to camp and almost got rabies from bats, but that's another story. But anyway, yeah, I just thought this would be a good way to end the summer. I know that's sad for a lot of people, but I'm mostly just happy that it's like actual spooky season. <laughs> like I'm always down for the Halloween vibe all year round, but now like everybody's like on the Halloween train with me. So I'm excited. I'm very excited to get into spooky content more so than usual. 200 videos. Okay, now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna get into like all the sappy shit. So you can click off here if you, if you don't want to waste your time. Thank you guys so much for being here. Whether this is your first video or you saw all 200 of them, I am so so grateful for you guys. When I started this channel two years ago, in the middle of COVID, like two months into COVID, I never ever thought that I would be sitting here right now. 3,200 subscribers, 200 videos, 56 live streams. I especially never saw myself live streaming. Like the catalog is just growing, the, the community is growing, everybody's so sweet and supportive. And you guys are so patient while I just like figure out how to do all of this. I read every single one of your comments, everyone. And when I see you guys saying that these videos give you a sense of calm or just kind of help take your mind off of the gestures at everything falling apart in the world right now, it is the most humbling thing. Uh, and it's the thing that inspires me to continue getting up and working, to continue being a creator on this platform. It's the thing that reminds me that there is a point to doing what I'm doing and that it's not just all for nothing. People see it, like you guys see it. So like that's, I get the chance to just kind of make your day a little bit better 
and that makes me really happy. So thank you. Thank you for enabling me to do that. <laughs> enabling my YouTube habit. Here's to another hundred videos. I should never film on this floor ever again. <laughs> thank you guys so much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing. Everything you do to support this channel means the world to me. If you're new here and you're a fan of nonsense, maybe consider sticking around because I post nonsense all the time. And remember, my name is Avery. I'm a YouTuber if you say so, because thanks to you guys, this is technically a YouTube channel. Bye! 200, baby! <laughs> Maybe for 300, I'll do one from the ceiling!